Hello, dear friends, on this beautiful Thursday morning. Been seeking the Lord, praying, getting quiet. You know what it's like. And uh, the Lord put in my heart a focus for our next deployment to Romania. And that is teach his people personal evangelism. Why do I say that? Well, I was uh, teaching a group of theological students in uh, Romania in uh, a Bible school. And I asked them this question. If somebody came to you and asked them, asked you, how can I become a Christian? What would you tell them? And invariably, the answer was, well, go to church, read your Bible, and pray. I said, you know, that's a, that's good advice, but it's somewhat incomplete. I don't think we can have any uh, set formula for personal evangelism. But there's something that we certainly can do is that we can prepare ourselves by memorizing, committing to memory those verses that deal with. Uh, everlasting life, assurance of salvation. And I uh, recommend, number one, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that what? Whoever believes in him, what happens? Will not perish, but have everlasting life. Either that's true or it's not. If it is, then we need to use that. We can go to John uh, uh, 5, 24. Jesus speaking there says, Verily, verily, I say to you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me equals hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And so you've got to ask a person, you know, have you heard the words of Jesus Christ? Have you heard the message of the gospel? Do you believe in God who sent Jesus Christ? And uh, if they said it affirmatively, you can, uh, based on the authority of the word of God, found in uh, John chapter 5, verse 24, then, because you fulfill the two qualifications, you have heard God's word, and you believe in him that sent me, therefore, the Bible says you have everlasting life. You shall not come into condemnation, but it's passing death unto life. And then we can go on to uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Um, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Or the apostle Paul to the Philippian jailer, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Then we have uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. What does it say there? By grace ye are saved through faith. How? By grace, the goodness of God, ye are saved. How? Through faith. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus Christ. By grace ye are saved through faith, and that's not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Lest any man should boast and say, oh, I deserve it. Doesn't happen. What does happen is it's not by works, but faith in Jesus Christ. And do you have any more? Of course I have more. 1 John 5, 13. John, writing that, he says, These things I write unto you. Okay, he's writing. He's writing to whom? These things I write unto you who believe on the name of the Son of God. Okay, so he's writing to those who believe on the name of the Son of God. What is, he, what is he saying? What is he doing? He says, these things I write unto you who believe on the Son of God that you might know. Oh, he wants them to know something. I wonder what it is that he wants these people who believe in the name of the Son of God. What does he want them to know? These things I write unto you who believe on the name of the Son of God that you might know that you have eternal life. You mean they didn't know? Obviously, they didn't know. Why else would he write them and say, I want you who believe, believe in the name of the Son of God to know this, that you have eternal life. 
Why does he want him to know them? Because they pray from uh, a member of the family. They pray of a father. They know they have been forgiven. They know have, they have been accepted. And they live a life not trying to earn salvation, but know that it's a gift of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, if we have those verses, and there are others, memorize then God can pull them out of the toolbox of our resource of, of uh, 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 verses that deal with salvation. If somebody comes to me and, and says, um, uh, Roy, I would, uh, I would like to um, become a Christian. What do I need to do? I go right to John 3.16. Uh, like I shot out of a gun. I'll say, well, I'll determine where they are. Are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Now, we work in Romania, and they're, you know, they're, they're filled with people who believe in Jesus Christ. They're Orthodox. The Orthodox Church has done a wonderful job in, in uh, describing, teaching, in, in, in putting, in, in empowering people to know who Jesus Christ is. That's not true in every uh, uh, European nation, but it's true in Romania and probably a few others. And so uh, they're, they're, they're strong believers. They, they pray every day and they do their religious things. You know, uh, we all do our religious things uh, depending on our background, Methodist, Presbyterian, um, Lutheran, Evangelical, Pentecostal, you know, we all have a different way of worshiping but we all believe in the lord jesus christ and so if they come to me and they ask me i go to john 3 16 and i say well uh, are you a believer in jesus christ yes well then i develop that well what, uh, do you believe that he is god the son yes do you believe that he walked on earth yes do you believe that he died uh, on the cross for sins yes do you believe he died on the cross for your sins? Yes. Do you believe that he rose again from the dead? Yes, absolutely. Then you are a believer in Jesus Christ. Then whoever believes in him, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, two things happen. Number one, whoever believes in him will not perish. And I will say to them, clearly, you cannot perish as a believer in Jesus Christ. Why? Because orcine crede in Yelsa no piara. Whoever believes him, and that was a Romanian language, whoever believes him will not perish. And what else? Whoever believes in him, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, but whoever believes in him will not perish, number one, and number two, have everlasting life. Either it's true or not. Either we believe in the Bible or it's not. Who's talking there? Well, it's in the red letters, as someone said, uh, in some Bibles. And uh, it's, it's Jesus speaking. And if anybody knows who's saved or not, it certainly is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, are there things that we need to do after we've been saved? Of course. But we're not saved by good works, as we sometimes say. We're saved unto good works. And so my... My uh, my uh, focus is for for to tell to describe the leaders, the pastors, uh, the uh, the theological students in Romania. You know, personal evangelism. Evangelism shouldn't happen only in the church. It should happen in the marketplace of life. It should happen in our families, in in our villages, and so on. And by God's grace, that's what we're going to endeavor to do this year. And I'm, I'm looking, I'm learning. I, I want to uh, uh, develop this. So I'm, I'm looking up Navigator's information. They are an excellent uh, resource for material. I'm looking up the four spiritual laws. I'm looking up the Roman, Roman road and so on. Because there's so much material out there to help us to bring uh, the message of the gospel, the sublime simplicity of a John 3.16 or an Ephesians 2.8 and 9. 
and Roy, you, you, you need to have saving faith, saving faith. Well, show me in the Bible where it talks about saving faith. Uh, I, I know there's some place in the Bible it says that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, it's good enough. It's good enough. And why not take the faith the size of a mustard seed and build on that rather than tear that mustard seed the level of faith down? No. We take the faith that people have and we strengthen it and we lock it into the bedrock of Scripture. And then we become effective in personal evangelism. Oh, do I have some examples? Do I have some stories to tell you? Absolutely incredible, marvelous stories. And uh, I'll save it for another time, okay? God bless you. My name is Roy. Yes, I'm a bishop. <laughs> I'm a bishop. So I'm a missionary bishop to Romania and beyond. And I'm your friend. And God bless you. And uh, I'll be back.